<clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Yegor. It's a difficult name, right? Uh, my story is completely fictional, but based on real cases that happened in Avito, where I am responsible for client-side platform development. All names, circumstances, and facts are changed. This talk should be especially useful for people working on products for other developers, either as a full-time job or in open source. Our main, our main hero is Ivan. Ivan is an engineer just like you and me. And today is a lucky day for Ivan. He's got an offer in a super popular company in IT community, which he aimed for the last five years. Let it be a veto, but for cats. And Ivan is a cat too. A cat Avito is a large company. A couple of hundreds of developers, many of which work not on end user product, but on technical platform. The company strongly believes uh, that it will help them to scale and win their competitors. The platform is really large. It includes their own cloud, a couple of in-house storage solutions, various architecture components. Ivan was employed in a team working on a design system for mobile apps. Well, you know, that's a kind of a library with uh, reusable UI components. Ivan's first day starts with his mentor. Instead of long onboarding, he suggests to check the repo and look at the code. Ivan does it, launches the product, and opens IDE. His first reaction is a culture shock. It's the best thing that he saw in his life. Each component's code is an object of art, ideally written, entirely covered with documentation and unit tests, designed with solid in mind. The component's catalog is also a separate application with millions of possibilities. It allows to change each component's appearance, compose multiple components with drag and drop, write comments, create tasks for designers and developers, and many, many, many more. It literally can do everything. Under the hood, it's also really great. Unidirectional architecture, no massive view controllers, other anti-patterns. Ivan understands that his dreams came true and he found the best team in his life. Ivan's first task once again makes him extremely happy. He's responsible for implementing the collaborative editing in components catalog. The use case is a component should be edited simultaneously by a designer and a developer. When this feature will be implemented, designers and developers will be able to work entirely in the app instead of personal meetings. And nobody likes meetings, right? So, after it, Ivan goes in a cafeteria for lunch. There he gets acquainted with uh, several of developers from product teams. They talk a lot about the product, new app features, development problems. But when Ivan tells that he's working on the design system, Everybody starts looking at him with green. We stopped using it a long ago, tells one of them, Olga. You just don't have components we need, uh, and your team isn't going to develop them. We tried to create them ourselves, but you blocked all of our pull requests because we were not able to keep your strict coding standards. Ivan doesn't lose his heart and tells everyone about a new feature he's about to implement. Once again, Olga doesn't show any interest. Why do we ever want to do it when our designer sits right here in our team and doesn't need a standalone system to talk with the developer? And we already use Sketch and Zeppelin that are capable of all these things. The lunch ends in awkward silence. On the next day, Ivan discusses the situation with his team. Boris laughs, typical Olga and tells a long story of their war with product teams uh, that didn't want to use components and invest in clean code. They just don't know what they really need. We are giving them new possibilities and they throw them away. Creating new components is not a priority for us. It is dull and routine work. Component catalog is a much better investment. It should be as functional and convenient as possible. Suddenly, everyone in the team receives an email. They are asked to come to a meeting room together with other platform teams. Nikolai, an engineering director, takes a wet. Sorry, guys, we got bad news here. In three months, our teams will be unformed and will go to various product teams. 
Our management doesn't believe in us anymore. They haven't seen anything valuable from us for, uh, for a long time. They don't know what we are doing, and all they have from product teams is a negative feedback. I tried to get the situation back to normal, but didn't succeed. All you can do now is to gently freeze all of the ongoing projects and keep waiting for three months. There, there are a lot of questions uh, and discussions after Nikolai's speech, but Ivan doesn't hear anything. His dream is ruining towards his eyes. Silently, he walks out of the office. After some time walking, Ivan calls his former colleague, Natasha, who is a product manager. He wants to know if it's still possible to return on his previous job. After telling the whole story to Natasha, he has the question, what is the component system and goal? Ivan thinks a little. To make a universal and functional design system. No, that's not a correct goal. You have to think about it more. Recall all the product management practices we used together in our job. I think that there is not so much difference between building products for developers and real users. On the next day, Ivan comes to his demotivated team with a bunch of ideas. The first thing they have to do is to understand the essence of their technical product. Uh, Ivan decides to use a familiar instrument, Lean Canvas. It is a really useful and brief way to describe the product vision. Ivan changed the traditional scheme a bit to make it more suited for developer tools. After working on Lean Canvas for the whole day, Tim got the following result. Top problems that a product is going to fix. In Ivan's case, it's the number of UI bugs and complex interactions between designers and developers. The target audience. Who is going to benefit from this product? In case of design system, there are two primary audiences, mobile developers and designers. Boris also suggested to add QA specialists and product managers, but Ivan convinced him not to include them because it will blow their focus. Product mission statement. It is a short phrase that summarizes uh, what the product is made for. It's like an elevator pitch, but for elevator that moves with the speed of light. You know. uh, the team uh, selected the following statement, closed ecosystem for full cycle UI development. Top features. These are killer features that are in the core of your product. In our cases, the features are Components code is a single source of truth, automated interaction between designer and developer, and fast snapshot testing. Adoption strategy. That's a plan of how you will grow the audience of your product. There are two main strategies. At first, you can uh, roll out your product gradually by features. You make available at first one feature, then second, then third. Uh, the second strategy is to roll out everything for everyone at once. And the third one is to roll out by user percentage or by user groups. Metrics that will help you to understand if you are moving in the right direction. The team decided to watch for the daily sessions in the catalog application and the number of UI bugs. Alternative product section helps you to understand if you have any competitors and how your audience currently solve their problems. Risks and countermetics, everything that can make your product or team fail. In our case, uh, the Ivan's team see only one risk, that developers won't have time to refactor their screens to a new components. And the last but not least important section, why you? You should understand your key strengths and competencies that will help you. Ivan's team, for example, has a really strong technical domain knowledge in building design systems. Besides it, they already have a solid technical platform to build new features on. So that's the completed Lean Canvas model for mobile design system. <coughs> At the end of the day, Ivan launches a net promoter score. It's a simple poll for the target audience. It will help, the, help him to understand the current situation. Uh, this poll consists of two questions. How likely that you will recommend our design system to your colleagues? And explain your answer. 
Based on their responses, customers fail in, fall into one of three groups. Promoters, passives, or detectors. Promoters are loyal enthusiasts who are happy with the product and will promote it to their colleagues. Passives are satisfied but unenthusiastic customers who can easily switch to another product. Detectors are unhappy customers who have the potential to damage what you are doing. To calculate your NPS score, you should subtract uh, the percentage of detectors from the percentage of uh, promoters. The higher the score is, the better your product is for your customer base. After sending the poll to everyone from the target audience, Ivan goes home. Despite the hard work, many things from the Lean Canvas worry him. Some key assumptions like customer problems and top features seem to be proved only by team expert opinion. And Ivan knows that decisions made only by opinionated developers are most often harmful for customers. However, Tim did a great job and systematized its vision of the product. By lunch, Ivan receives most answers. The NPS is extremely low, minus 80 points. The only positive feedback came from people who didn't use the design system before and just tried about its features. In the raw form, NPS answers are not very actionable, so Ivan starts to analyze them. At first, Ivan deletes everything besides negative feedback. Then he clusters the feedback and gives each cluster a meaningful name. He tries not to decompose clusters too much because there is not so many answers. Then he counts the priority for each uh, cluster using the standard NPS formula, percent of promoters minus percent of detectors. This time, the score in both cases is minus 100. No one told a kind word. So in the end, Ivan got two primary problems. At first, designers don't know anything about the product and its capabilities. Second, developers don't use the product because it's too hard to integrate components on new screens, create new components, or change existing ones. Ivan writes out all detectors who gave a meaningful and detailed feedback. He sends each one an invite to a short 15 minutes interview. The goal of such interviews is to define the primary problems and pains of each customer and understand how he solves them. Developer interviews helps to validate some assumptions by talking to a representative member of the target audience. Ivan recalls some advices from Natasha for conducting such interviews. At first, always prefer face-to-face -face communication to messenger or email. Texting doesn't let you build a strong personal contact in a short time. <coughs> Secondly, always ask open questions. Don't let yourself to direct respondents to answers you want to hear. For example, bad questions are, do you want us to build feature X? Would you use feature X if it, be, if it would be available? And don't follow a strict set of questions. Be free to change your plan uh, so each res for each respondent so that your dialogue will flow uninterrupted. Interviews passed with a variable success. Most people made contact with these, but there were also some haters. However, one thing remained constant in all interviews. No one considered, considered current team focuses important or useful. Besides it, Ivan was able to identify a pretty strong insight list. The first insight, the development speed is incredibly important for all respondents. The main pain points are the lack of the needed components in the system and difficulty of building new components. And the second insight is that designers are not involved into UI development using the component system. All teams use Sketch and Zeppelin as a primary stack and don't see any profit from switching to not so powerful proprietary system. Besides it, they also suffer from the lack of the same components in Sketch. When Ivan showed the results to his team, nobody told a word. Suddenly ev everyone, even Boris, realized that they spent last year building a very complex system that doesn't solve any real problems. And their expert opinion uh, completely failed in front of the customer's real needs. Ivan sees that he should do something uh, because his team was going to fall in depression. So he asks everyone to go to the bar. 
Besides the team, he also calls Natasha, his former product manager, to join them. Ivan buys everyone beer and briefly tells Natasha about their results, show, showed her lean canvas and NPS results. Natasha doesn't give them much attention and once again asks, what is the goal of your product? And now Ivan knows the answer. To fasten user interface development. And it, it will be possible only if we provide maximum component coverage. And do you move towards this goal? No, and we don't know how because we spent last year building what we wanted uh, without knowing our users. Natasha tells team uh, a couple of new concepts. The first one is Pivot. Pivot is a correction of product course designed to test fundamentally new assumptions. Looks like that's exactly what Ivan's design system need. Uh, the team knows what they have been doing wrong and has some insights on what customer need. Uh, the second concept is MVP. MVP is a minimal viable product. It's the simplest possible version of what you are going to build that is capable of testing your assumptions. In the case of a design system, it means deprecation of components catalog, refactoring current components to early adopters' needs, and adding sketch UI kit. After a couple of hours, the team and Natasha formed uh, a list of next actions for making a pivot. Firstly, they should choose some early adopters. Early adopters are customers deeply involved in the process of designing and testing and developing MVP. They're better testers for all new features. They provide feedback and help you to refine the product vision. For current case, choosing one product team should be enough. Secondly, they should ask a designer to help them form a UI kit in Sketch. Move all the components from their beloved catalog to a tool everybody in the company uses. And finally, they should develop a set of components enough for building new features for early adopters. Well, that looks like a plan. However, the team got nothing to lose and only three months, well, two months and 28 days left. N another two weeks passed. Olga the one who hated the company's catalog on the first Ivan's day in Cat Avito became an early adopter and built her new feature using only components. She is not satisfied yet, but she likes what the team currently does, provides lots of feature requests, and involves designers in working with design system. Ivan goes to an engineering director to present the pivot, its first results, and updated link canvas. Besides everything else, uh, it has a new set of metrics uh, that the team plans to measure. The development speed for typical tasks, the percentage of screens migrated to components, and the percentage of components usage in new features. Nikolai approves the approach with joy. If the team will show significant growth in these metrics, it may be enough to save it from being disbanded. Another month passes. The team actively develops new components and feature requests from early adopters. The old component catalog is fully deprecated. But they face a new problem. Metrics don't grow, because still nobody uses the design system except Olga and a couple of other early adopters. As usual, Ivan goes to Natasha for an advice. Natasha laughs. How could you forget about marketing plans we developed for our new features? You have the very same situation. You've got customers, you want to make them happy, but they don't know about what you can do. But you can buy, buy its traffic, start a marketing campaign on federal TV, and buy some billboards on the street while building an internal product. Think about the instruments you currently have. Of course, uh, the scale is much smaller, but the approach remains the same. Ivan goes to office and tries to uh, recall the marketing plan development. Firstly, you should segment your target audience. Secondly, you should choose the most appropriate acquisition channel for each segment. And third, you should schedule all the activities. Speaking about technical products, you should segment the audience not only on their specialization, but considering their usage scenarios. I even selected the following categories. First, a developer wants to know, do we have all the components needed for his feature? Second, a developer who wants either to create a new component or to change an existing one. 
And last uh, segment is a designer who is working on a new feature layout. After it, Ivan writes uh, all available marketing instruments. A developer portal, usage guides, meetups, workshops, mailing lists, and others. Looks like things start to form a plan. A developer portal should become an entry point for everybody. It's a web page that contains all the information about the product, uh, event schedule, contacts, architecture, usage guides, and other. It should be structured so that each customer segment will find what he needs in minimum amount of time. The information about the portal will be spread using mailing lists and corporate blog. For the first segment, Ivan, Ivan decided to create a simple company catalog. Not that one from the beginning on his, of his work, but something much simpler. Just a web page with the list of the components and their screenshots. For developers and designers interested in working with components, Ivan plans to conduct a series of meetups, workshops, demos, blog posts. The primary goal is to be sure that everyone knows about design system, what is aware of, and about all its possibilities. It should help Ivan to form a community around the product, who will help each other make feature requests and be evangelists of the product. Using a design system should be trendy. So, Ivan formed a content plan for the following couple of months. It determines what information different segments are interested in and what channels to use. Ivan presents it to a team. Looks like everyone is really engaged and believes in it. So Ivan starts to work on it and continue to look at the metrics. Three months passed since Ivan's first work day. It was a really tough time. Ivan and his team faced challenges that they never thought of before. They spent lots of time not writing code, but working with community, which is uh, pretty uncommon for them. And that really helped. Design system is used by many teams. Metrics show significant growth, and backlog keeps growing with feature requests. Of course, there are also new problems. How to prioritize a backlog when multiple teams depends on a product? Uh, how to manage the versioning policy of uh, design system and each component? And many more. But in the end, Ivan and his team were able to return their product back to life and start making product teams happy and productive. Nikolai, the engineering director, asks Ivan to join him for lunch after a regular team demo. They talk a lot about differences between product and platform teams, developer experience, and other topics. At the end of the lunch, Ivan asks, what about my probation period? Is it over? I still haven't received any letter, and I'm starting to worry. Nikolai smiles, but news first. I don't think that you should stay in your team and develop the design system. Before Ivan says anything, he continues. I'm sure that it would be much better for you and our company if you change your focus to integrating all the practices we discussed in all of our platform teams. Chief Developer Experience Specialist, what do you think? And yes, I'm expecting results from you in six months. So this is the end of the story. Besides Ivan and his tough three months, we discussed many different things that can help you to build brilliant technical products. Lean Canvas, NPS, deep interviews, developer portal, and more. But there are many more practices behind developer experience that we haven't discussed today. It is dog fooding, developer experience sessions and patterns, documentation, and others. I will be more than happy to tell, about, to tell you about them in the format of blog posts or maybe something else. Be sure to write me if you are interested. And if you will remember only one thing from my talk, let it be the following one. While building developer tools, treat them like real products. While working for developers, treat them like real customers. And if you do it, you won't repeat many mistakes that me and Ivan did. Thank you. So we have to have the both microphone working because I'm going to run around with uh, the handheld microphone. This one is working as well. All right, so any question? Um, not everybody at the same time. <laughs> you stumped them. That's a, they're all like, wow, so many things. Yeah. 
So <laughs> all day, day too 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 much too much cats. So uh, well anyway. All right. Um, so uh, just you hand this microphone because this is where the microphone where you enter. By the way, um, um, message to the following speakers: We don't have a headset until tomorrow, so this is why you'll use the microphone. And in general, if anyone prefers to use the microphone instead of the headset, just tell me. Hi. What would you say is the difference in thinking about developer experience when it comes to offering, say, an open source uh, framework tool, or whatever? and building a, say, company internal product. Is, or is there any difference? Uh, yeah, the main difference is when you build something, something internally, your customers are sitting near you. You can stand up, come to another table, and show your product to the other guy who will use it. And when you do the open source product, you, it's, it's a bit tougher to find uh, early adopters, to uh, take real interviews, because you have to go to the community, find s someone from there, and it just takes more time. So I think that's uh, the primary difference. And uh, when you are building something for open sourcing, you have a uh, more wide audience, maybe with more segments in it. Thank you. <laughs>